I know it's probably going to be a difficult question, but if, if so many new replacements are like constantly coming in, it's just this uphill battle that we're constantly fighting. How are we ever supposed to, you know, know for sure that something isn't toxic? Well, I think that's the problem is you can only stay in your own lane. I'm not a toxicologist. I'm a physician. So I te teach my patients what to do. And we sometimes get blood testing and urine testing. And, you know, we, we try to figure out what each individual has in their body. But if I wanted to say um, pretty confidently, we're all loaded up with chemicals. It's just a matter of how well we can reduce them from our environment. We can't always fix the system. I have friends that are working on Capitol Hill, researchers, lawyers, they're doing their stuff very, very well, like environmental working group as a group. But I would say to us and people who might be watching this is we actually can reduce these chemical loads in our body. I'll give an example. Um, BPA or bisphenol A I mentioned earlier was taken out of plastic baby bottles in the US. That was the only thing they could get it out of. Meanwhile, it's in everything you can think of. It's on receipts. Uh, it seals the ink on receipts and currency, um, every receipt, believe it or not. Um, but it's also in the lining of canned foods and drinks. So literally every canned foods and drink, I mean, there's such a small percentage that don't have BPA, but then there's a question of whether there's a substitution that was designed. BPS is a, is a substitute they're using as well. But the idea is that it has a half-life, BPA, bisphenol A, of about six to eight hours, which means that 50% is reduced every six to eight hours in the human body. So by the time you get to one or two days, you've literally eliminated that particular BPA exposure. And there's studies from Harvard School of Public Health showing, particularly in one study who, you know, they gave 75 participants, um, you know, clean, healthy, non-packaged soup versus Progresso canned soup. And over the course of five days, they had the, the clean soup and then they had a washout and then they had the canned soup of Progresso. They even late said the name. And then they measured urine, which is how we measure bisphenol A. And they had 1100% drop in BPA between the fresh, uh, between the canned soup and the fresh soup. Uh, that's the only meal they switched out. And so what it shows is, is that some chemicals that we now know have very short half-lives, you can remove them from your life. If you change your lifestyle, say, you know, trying to get rid of canned foods and drinks um, and moving towards fresh or frozen, which you can transfer to glass to heat up. Okay, so the idea is the book is filled, our book is filled with reasonable solutions based on what we know about certain chemicals and certain high volume exposures. And that's what we want to do. We want to pick low hanging fruit and let people feel good knowing that what they're actually doing and making an effort for will have benefits hopefully down the line in terms of disease reduction.